The race for 10 Downing Street, it's heating up. We now have four hopefuls who are running in the race to be the next Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, while former Chancellor Rishi Sunak has emerged as the front runner. There is only one wild card entry that could turn tables around. We're talking about Britain's former Equalities Minister, Kemi Badenoch, who has emerged as the potential king maker in the Tory leadership race after she picked up votes in the third ballot on Monday night. Now, Bednock secured nine more votes, while on the other hand, UK Foreign Secretary Liz Truss managed to garner seven votes. The Trade Minister, Penny Modon, actually lost a vote, and neither of her rivals best place for the second slot. It is Bednock and her supporters who could play a crucial role here in deciding the final two contenders. Meanwhile, Truss and Modon have already started quoting those who voted for Bednock, and the former Equalities Minister, who was little known to the public before the contest began, Began, has now got a wild card lead. If she is knocked out in the next round of voting, then her supporters could determine if, it tr if it's Truss or Mordaunt who will be pitted against former Chancellor Rishi Sunak in the first leg of the in the final leg. Pardon me, the final leg of the race. Madnock, who described herself as the first generation immigrant, joined the Conservative Party at the age of 25 in the year 2005. During the teenage years, she worked at fast food joints and then pursued computer engineering at the University of Sussex in the year 2017. She was elected to the parliament and held junior ministerial jobs. However, she has never held a cabinet post. But with changes in political leadership, there are high chances that former Equalities Minister can hold a crucial cabinet post now. Now, Russian gas cuts, they've threatened Europe to seek alternative supplies to meet the demand. Countries are now ramping up measures to find a reliable alternative to Russian gas. And in the latest, the European Commission has signed a deal with Azerbaijan to double the imports of natural gas by 2027. Now, under this deal, Azerbaijan will increase deliveries of natural gas from the current 8.1 billion cubic meters to an expected 12 billion cubic meters by the end of this year. The deal was sealed following a meeting between EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen and Azari President Ilham Aliyev in Baku on Monday. From next year on, we should already reach 12 billion cubic meters. This will help compensate for cuts in supplies of Russian gas and contribute significantly to Europe's security of supply. France, meanwhile, has secured a new energy deal with the United Arab Emirates in what can be called a strategic agreement between both the countries. The partnership aims to identify joint investment projects in the sectors of hydrogen, renewable and nuclear energy. The deal coincided with UAE President's visit to Paris. This was al first foreign visit since assuming office in May. Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi, meanwhile, has finalized 15 agreements with Algeria to boost its gas deliveries. And this agreement will provide Italy a, an additional 4 billion cubic meters of gas, making the North African country. And uh, this would be Italy's biggest gas supplier. This uh, position was previously held by Russia before the Ukraine war. The details of the new partnership were announced on Monday by Italy's Prime Minister Mario Draghi and Algerian President. The deal comprises a number of agreements and MOUs in areas ranging for, from energy to sustainable development. Despite all of these efforts, the International Energy Agency has issued a warning saying that Europe's efforts to diversify suppliers will not be enough to get it through winter. The Energy Agency said that it is not enough to just rely on alternate sources as the import amount it won't be able to compensate for the volume that Europe used to get from Russia. While EU has not put Russian gas under sanctions, it of course has sought to cut imports to reduce its dependence on Russia. Moscow also lost several European gas clients after it demanded that all unfriendly countries pay for Russian natural gas in rubles. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.